All right, let's do the damn thing. All right, everybody, welcome back to episode 44, 42, 43. Hold on. No, it's not working, but <laughs> we're live. Anyways, welcome to episode, let's say 44. Why not? Maybe 42 because that's the only paper. But we are here back again with the Everybody But Me show. Um, it's been a wonderful journey so far, and we have Phil joining us tonight, and we have hello, a hello, wonderful hello. guest tonight. She is known as the girl's best friend on Instagram. She is someone that's all about helping the other ladies raise their standards. She's all about helping them through a breakup. And we've all been there. We all needed this friend. And I'm so glad that she came up all the way from Miami for a live show today. So I'm excited to have her on here and get to know even more. Um, but we got Coco. Let me get this. Try, let me try and get this right. <laughs> Slunski. Okay, good. I'm getting there. Better? Yeah. I'm joining us tonight. Coco, how are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? You doing fabulous? How was the ride up? It was great because I took an amazing train. The bright line. Bright line. And it was just, I had all this plans, like I'm going to work, I'm going to do this. It just went so, by so fast. And I don't work for Brightline, but I should because it's the best. No, Brightline is literally incredible. Once yeah. you start doing that, it changes the whole way of traveling up. And yeah. I won't drive to Miami anymore because what's the point? Why honestly? would you? Where are you going to park? Yeah, no, there's no point of driving back to Miami. Um, it is a, uh, it's an easy way to do it. Hey, Mike, real quick, can you check on the AMP app and make sure? Oh, never mind. The AMP app just froze and went away. It's Mercury Retrograde. I don't know if you guys believe, guys believe in that. Okay. It's a real thing. Hold on. You just said something that everyone keeps talking about. Yes. And I was with somebody this weekend, and she says Mercury's in retrograde, yes. and that's why things are weird. <laughs> yes. What is that? So Mercury, I don't, I'm not an astrologist, obviously, but Mercury is a planet in charge of communication and technology and communication in general. So when it's in retrograde, everything communication-wise gets a little messed up. So your email might be fucked up, your elevators, your elect everything that's like communication, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's happening Even like time interpersonal you. communication yeah. between like me and you? Yeah, like if you're fighting with somebody more than you would usually Mercury's fight. Mercury's in retrograde. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is that more of an excuse or is that for real? It's for real. You believe it? It's I. My brother did not believe in it and he saw it's true. Do you believe in like astrology and everything that has to go with it? I believe in the universe. So that's why I think astrology is somewhat real. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was hanging with this girl. Uh -huh. The astronomy out, if you guys want to really quick. Yeah. So since we're all orbiting at different speeds, we pass planets sometimes. Retrograde is when we're passing Mercury, so it's getting left behind us. And since the moon has effect on tides and the water, and we're made of water, other planets have gravitational pull on us. So normally Mercury passes us. Sometimes we pass it back, like we kind of lap it. So that was, that's what makes retrograde? It's just a little gravity deviation that people are like, that's messing with us. So. You know so much. Okay, let's My, go. Michael, <laughs> Michael always drops some fun facts. He's yes, he does. He's he asking does. me about creation histories. He's asking me about soccer. Now he knows about yeah, yeah. planets. Like, <laughs> who are you? Michael hit you with some information. Yep. That's for damn sure. So, so I was with a girl this weekend, and she was telling me, she was like, all of our astrology signs, they all match perfectly, mm -hmm. except for like the love compatibility one. Which is the most important one. Well, I guess. Yeah, it should be, you know. If it's a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. And but What, you and your, you in a different sign? Someone I was like, hanging out with this <clears throat> past weekend, yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha, 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 okay. And I was like, and I was just like, and I, to me, I think it's all bullshit. I'll be r real honest with you. I mean, if you don't believe it, it's not going to be real. Yeah, exactly. Say it again, Coco. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> if you don't believe it, it's you not going to be real. You got to believe, baby. The same you way if believe. you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to make it. So if you don't believe in astrology, it's not going to work for you. Fair yes, enough. I guess. Fair enough. Okay. So Coco, how did you get your start? How did I get my start? Well, I'm from Croatia originally. Mm -hmm. I came here when I was 22. Wow. I usually like to say I came with $1,000 in high standards and two suitcases. And that's literally what happened. I came on an exchange program. My family was back. I mean, it is my family is back home. Everybody's home. Um, and I always wanted to come to the U.S. I wanted to live in the U.S., but I didn't know anything about it besides what I've seen in the movies and stuff like that. So once I came here... I was just like, wow, this is everything I ever wanted. I just, I was just born in the wrong country because Croatia is a small country. You can't really work in media or marketing or beauty. I used to be a makeup artist. So I was just like, this is the place where I should be. And here I am almost 10 years later. I guess it's doing okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, 
I, I don't regret ever leaving Croatia. It's mm -hmm. very, very hard, obviously, when your family is not here. Actually, my brother was just here. He visited me first time in Miami. He was obsessed. He might move here too. So let's see if he can do it. Even though like with any immigrant out there knows with paperwork, it's just not so easy. Like I'm still on a work visa. It's very difficult to like actually get the green light from you know, the embassy. But um, it's been, I mean, it's been a journey. I love my life here and... Who makes yeah. who makes better men, Croatia or the States? I, funny enough, I never really dated a Croatian guy, like seriously dated because mm -hmm. they came here when I was 22. And I was just not interested in Croatian guys. So I guess America. <laughs> America takes a, a, a victory there. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. How has dating been for you? Are you seeing anybody right now? Yes, I have a boyfriend, two years. Two years, wow. Actually, I met him the first week no, the first month when I moved to Miami by accident. It was not supposed to, He also moved to Miami for work. We were both about to live our best single lives I'm in about Miami. to say you just moved to Miami and then you yeah. get all booed up? Oh, yeah. man. And that's, I mean, we just clicked. He's also a very private person. So dating somebody who is, you know, a social media influencer, whatever, content creator, it was just not. It was just like, yo, this, he didn't plan on dating me and I didn't plan on dating him and then we fell in love so life has been pretty good in Miami for me so it's been working out then mm -hmm. wow, one of the few wow. able to figure it out and tie it down in Miami yeah. so how did you get your following how did all that start to grow on social media when okay so when I was living in New York I was a makeup artist and my content was just like beauty you know your typical beauty blogger and posting makeup tutorials whatever at, and then COVID happened. At the end of 2020, there was a lot of photo shoots happening in Miami. So I was flying down to do photo shoots for production companies. And Miami was pretty open. And I realized, what am I doing in New York? It was cold. I was living in a shitty apartment. Like, I wasn't happy in New York at that time. Mm -hmm. And Miami was still, you know, Miami was just like a whole new world open. So I moved down to Miami and I, that's when TikTok started happening. So I was like, I want to get on TikTok, but I don't know what to post. And then I asked all of my friends, what should I post? And they all told me, post a makeup tutorial. I was like, I don't want to post a makeup tutorial. So I was just sitting on my couch randomly with no hair, no makeup. And usually at that time, everybody was like very dolled up on the internet. And I was posting videos, things I wish I knew before I moved to Miami. And that took off on TikTok. And I was like, this is so weird. Why, why are people reacting to me talking about Miami? And that's when I realized that people just want to, they just want more connection. They want to talk to people. So I just started posting. I was just, I just started saying things to the camera and I was just sharing my opinions. And I just started, obviously I have a lot of trolls, a lot of haters because I talk about dating and I usually call guys out and I say what is acceptable, what is not acceptable based on me. And there, there was this one video that blew up two years ago. And um, ever since then, I was labeled as a high maintenance influencer, and I have no problem with that. So <laughs> that's where we are right now. Love it. So, so sorry, I was on my phone. It's because I had to restart that's the show. Okay. So, but um, what Coco was telling us was her background, how she became and started popping up on TikTok. She started making <clears throat> these videos, and she became known as the high maintenance influencer. Yeah, if you Google me, that's literally what says on the internet. I love that. Oh, I love it. And I'm not even. Gonna, I mean, I'm not, you, you brought out your little makeup bag when you were here that said "rich bitch" on it. So I mean, <laughs> I'm like, get it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a brand that I really like. So. So, so I think something, you know, one of the things I want to talk about you and, and I think everyone here wants to learn about is, is standards mm -hmm. and, and what those look like and how to raise your standards and, and, and how do your standards get so low to begin with? I actually, I will tell you the video that I posted. It was about not accepting a coffee or a walk as a possible first date option. And I'm very curious. Really? Yes. Hmm. I think they're boring, but. What do you guys think about coffee dates? I've, I'm, I've never done it. Me either. Well, I don't drink coffee, so. No. <laughs> I've only done it as like a, like we're already seeing each other. Mm -hmm. Let's go get a coffee and walk around kind of date. So the internet th didn't really agree with me. So they were like very against me saying that coffees and walks are not appropriate dates. And for me, this just, it's a joke. Like you, if you like somebody, you want to go on a date with them and you want to like actually experience something you want to spend some time with them, going on a coffee or a walk date, for me, it's like, you're 
you're not sure if she's hot enough for you. Like you want to see if she's worthy of a dinner. Mm. And that's where this whole thing. Oh, so, it's like a, so it's kind of like you're getting a little preview before you're like, you say it's like dip your toe in the water, see if it's warm enough. Testing. Yeah. Before you go. For, so you're saying this is, you're taking a coffee date before you decide to actually take a dinner date. So yeah. you're going to spend that money or not. So the video was, I don't accept a coffee or a walk as a possible date option and neither should you. And then, I mean, the, the video was pretty animated. I said that I'm not a dog that needs to be walked and that I have a espresso machine at home. Works fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're not doing drinks either. You're going to try to get me drunk and take me back home. No, we're doing dinner. I'm literally verbatim. So what if he pulls up in a, like a beat up old Toyota Corolla? Or I personally would not like that. No? No. So he's got to have something nice. So he doesn't have that. Okay. So standards are over the car too. It's not, it's not, I, I think that, I mean, I don't have a car myself, so I guess I can't, you know, judge people by their cars. I'm not judging anybody by their cars, by the way. I just think that if you are, if you're dating somebody, you want to impress them and you want to like take them out. You want to have them experience something. If you're taking somebody on a coffee walk date, you don't really like them at the very beginning. Yeah. And that's a fact. I And then people are like, how do you know you're not a guy? I'm like, I asked every single guy that I know and they all tell me the same thing. You're just that's not why they sure. they do it. Yeah. And they want to save money because guys who go <laughs> on dating apps and they have all these dates lined up, I'm 100% sure they have dates like 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 7 p.m., 5 and they're going on coffee dates. It's five dollars. Ken, coffee hopefully. Dates. I guess if you're if you're on the dating app and you got a lot of dates going on, and if you're a guy, you're like, what's the most economically sound way to do this? I am going to take six different girls on a coffee date, and then the top two I'm gonna take to a nice dinner date. And then from yeah. there we'll see what happens. Yeah. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Is that what guys are doing these days? Unfortunately, it seems like they are. So you're more old school, you want dinner. I'm traditional. Okay. And I think that I as because I'm European, I feel like in Europe. Nobody would even suggest a coffee date. Nobody, it's just. What's what, a good first date for you? Dinner. dinner. It's just dinner because. Some people panic about dinner being a first date. I know. And for me, but it's not about, okay. So people usually say like, oh, you just want a free meal. I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. But <laughs> the, you can meet, you can learn so much about a person when you're going on a dinner date. And I will explain why. So let's say you come to the restaurant and you're just gonna, you're gonna analyze him. So you're gonna see how he's acting. So let's say if he goes to the hostess stand, is he gonna, the, first of all, does he have a reservation? Second, is he gonna open your door when you're entering the restaurant? That is important for me. When he comes to the hostess, the way he's gonna speak to her, like, is he gonna be, you know, hi, we have a reservation, or he's gonna be like a little mouse, like, oh, I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> I it's, love it's like gonna, You want confidence. I want confidence. You want a man. Absolutely. That's it. Let's go. Uh -huh. Then the way he speaks to the hostess, if she's super hot, which usually hostesses are, is he gonna flirt with her? Like, you can see this right away. What if he flirts with her? Immediately, no. Are you, are you gonna walk away? I wouldn't walk away. I would just, like, it would just be entertaining. I never, but it, I had relationships in my life. So I wasn't like dating actively all the time. I never walked out on a date. I don't think so. But then, okay, you come to the restaurant, you get the hostess. Let's say your table is not ready. And I want everybody, every female listening to this right now, the table is not ready. Does he suggest to wait outside because he wants to save money on a drink? Or is he going to get a drink? Or he's going to be like, okay, let's sit by the bar and let's get a drink. Let's go wait by the bar, of course. Yeah. Some guys are going to be like, oh, let's wait outside. I, I've heard stories. Then you sit at the restaurant. It's, you sit at the table. Where is, like, what is he going to do when you sit? Is he going to show you the cheapest like menu option on the, on the menu? Or he's going to say, like, order whatever you want. Or, like, just the, the way he communicates. Then... When the waiter comes, how he speaks to the waiter, obviously, like that's very important. Then let's say if something happens on the side, let's say a waiter drops a tray of drinks. Is he going to say, oh, look at this idiot? Or he's going to say, oh my God, I feel so bad for him. Mm -hmm. So you can learn so much about a human being at a dinner date because you're not like when you have a coffee date or something, it's you're, you two walking and that's it. Hopefully, I don't know. But when you are surrounded with so many things around you, you can just learn about the person. And then obviously when the check comes, <laughs> it's a huge discussion still on my- on Did my, I watch this on yours? Maybe. Don't do the little fake grab. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did see that on yours. <laughs> yeah, I said like, when, if a guy invites you on a dinner date- I love this. He invited you out and like, girls are doing the fake reach. You're like, you're like, oh, trying to go like super slow. And you're like, <laughs> like, first of all, it's 
you're faking it. It's a fake reach. You don't want him to take your credit card. So what the fuck are like, why are you even doing? I don't know if I can curse here. No, it costs away. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Why are you trying to be nice? Like, and then girls, rep I posted a video about this and girls are like, well, I want him to think, well, you obviously don't want to pay. So why don't you, like, you're starting a relationship pretending to want to pay for you. What? It just makes no sense to me. So yeah, I get very heated about it. No, no, no. I mean, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I actually had this debate with my brothers on here because when I was a little kid growing up, my mom would give me an extra 20 bucks to go to the movie theaters and then make sure I bought her ticket and bought her popcorn or M&Ms, whatever it was, you know? And my whole, if I'm dating, every time I'm dating somebody or I'm taking them out on a date, I'm always paying. Mm -hmm. Even if we're dating for months and months and months, I'm still, Me too. I'm taking you out always. and taking care of it, you know? And, and it's, it's an investment into you, it's an investment into us, it's all those things to me, you know? It's a man who is living in his masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And I I was just on the way here. I was replying to my Wobo Kokudu questions because I have it every Tuesday and Friday. And there was a question where a guy was, I mean, a girl said that she's dating this guy and he says that he believes in equality. So that's why he should not pay for the bill. I'm like, okay, then you guys are just not <laughs> on the <this> planet. <laughs> no, I mean, my brother was like, my brother Austin was like, yeah, we're, we're splitting that bill, you know? And my brother Ryan was like, you know, it just depends on how far along we're dating, you know? And so I, I think everyone has a different way of looking at that. But I just think the old school in the correct way and chivalrous way is if I'm taking you out, I'm taking care of it, you know? And like, and if I'm dating you, I'm taking care of you, Yep. you know? And, and like my whole outlook on it is like, I want you to make your money and I want you to put your money away and save it. If you're my girl, if you're my girlfriend, if I'm dating you, I'm paying rent, I'm paying whatever, I'm paying the bills. I'm doing all, cause that's just how I was raised. Amen, brother. Me you know? too. And yes, and you make that money. And if we work out, fantastic. That would be more money for us to work with together down the road. But the money that we, that I'm making, if I'm taking you out and I'm dating you, it's, it's for us. And if I get no pinch, I'm going to tell you. And if we can work through that pinch and get through that and you can stick with me when my shit's low and, and we got to eat. You know, on a budget or that, be on that, a budget. That's your person. We can roll through that. That's my, you know. That's, that's your person. Die right there. Yeah. I have a question about, you know, when people are like, well, I want somebody who's going to be, you know, a partner in crime and shit like that. How, what would you say to those people when they, you know, what you just said, I absolutely agree. But mm -hmm. then you have people who are going to be like, well, if you guys are building a life <laughs> together, like you should be together and together. Like, what do you say to those people? So, so what I... What's your question here? Like, what, like the people. Like, who let's say somebody. Okay, I mean, I get financial questions all the time. Mm -hmm. I think that girls, I don't know how men roll because I'm say I'm a girl. Girls have a hard time discussing finances. Mm -hmm. That's just among my friends, among my followers. Everybody. I think anybody has a hard time discussing I, finances. I, I don't agree, think it's yeah. just women. Yeah. I think men have a hard time discussing finances. I know. I'm not gonna lie. There's there's girls that I've dated and I've you know been looking at to date and whatnot. And I'm a diff I'm a, I'm, a, I'm in a way different financial bracket than the men they've dated. I'm talking about way below, and that's intimidating in a sense. But then I said it back. I'm like, I don't need to be worried about what they, the no. previous people did or made or whatever. I got to do what I got to do. I got to figure out what my success looks like and how I can make the money that makes me happy, them happy, and my family happy. You know. Um, so I, I think it's a hard conversation for everyone to have because it's a conversation where you have to put your egos away. And you have to be honest. Yep. Yeah. A lot of girls ask me if he's paying the rent, does that mean that I have to do everything around the house? Does that mean that I have to do this? And I feel like if you're in a relationship and we're talking, you know, you have to have that open, honest conversation if you're about to live with someone. You can't just move in with someone, be in the honeymoon stage, and then you move in and he's like, okay, well, now I want you to split this. I want this. I want that. And if people want to split things, I have it's your life. Do whatever works for you. Literally, mm -hmm. like whatever works for you, do that. But you have to have a conversation so you have expectations so you can set boundaries and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to move in and then just like that should definitely all be clear before you move in with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I think like you know about the chores around the house and all that. Like, I to me, I, my whole life, I thought the chores thing for me was hey, let's just figure out how to get it done so we can enjoy our time. You know, it was never like, you have to do this, this, and this, and this, and I'm doing this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, divide and conquer, let's get it done. Like, I, I don't believe in all the chores, like who does this, who does that. I don't fucking cook well, so <laughs> that's just, if we want to roll the dice and let me cook, you know. Right. I, I'm almost burnt my house down twice now. Wow. <laughs> on two different dates. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, thank God you, you, yeah, you do GC, right? Yeah. So you can I can build it back, you know. But no, so, but here here's something I'm curious to ask you. Yeah. So I'm a big Steve Harvey fan. I love Steve Harvey. I like Steve Harvey too. You like Steve Harvey? Okay, yeah. go ahead. So Steve Harvey just did uh, Club Shay Shay, which is Shannon Sharp's uh, podcast. It's one of my favorite shows to listen to. And and uh, he had an interview, and he he got a lot of heat for this. He said, I, and I think he got a lot of heat for it because every, only it was half interpreted. He said, my wife, his wife is Marjorie. She belongs to me. And okay, and so everyone went nuts. <laughs> They're like, how dare you say she belongs to you? She's not a property. She's not a possession, which obviously we all know this, right? But he's like, I belong to her and, and I, I'm hers, you know? And, that, and, and, and it's just kind of like that. It's possessive, yes, but it's just like a way of, that right there is like a way of like, you don't turn back on that, you know? Like, I'm hers, she's mine, and we're together. And, 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 and some people have such a hard time with that. I'm curious to hear what you have to I say about that. I love Steve Harvey. I will quote something he said. If a man takes you out and he's not willing to buy you a plate of food, how could you possibly think that this man can take care of a family? Which I 100% agree with. Mm. Steve Harvey, I, I feel like him and I have a very similar mindset in some things, obviously not everything. I I feel like people just like to, you know, he said she's we belong to each other and they just want to interpret the wrong way, the same, you know, the people just need to talk about something. Mm -hmm. I 100% feel like I... You know, me and my boyfriend, we belong to each other, but not like in a weird way, not in a way that like he can tell me what I can or cannot do or something, but I would do everything for him and I'm pretty sure he would do everything for me. So mm -hmm. I feel like if you're with somebody like that, that's what he meant to say. People yeah. just wanted to. And that is true. And that's an old school mentality. And that's the way I feel at home too. I mean, that's, if that's, people are always you know, discussing he doesn't want to commit, he doesn't want to commit, but then you have a guy who's like, I'm committing to my wife and they have an issue with that too. Yeah. So, okay. I, I just think there's there's issues with everything. Every, I was you, saying. You know. Yep. <laughs> what did I post? Wait, I posted something the other day and there was, yeah, I posted, I don't even know what, what the post was about and this girl was like, you know, I usually like all of your posts, but I don't agree with this one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you don't have to. No. <laughs> like, you yeah. don't have to agree with everything I say. Like, I'm a human being, you're a human being, we have all opinions. Well, I, I think that just has to go with the whole political climate that we're in now. Everything is so polarizing one way or the other. Oh. So now everyone just knows how to argue. And no one knows how to, like, you know, listen to an opinion and grow from it and learn from it and just go away from it. If you don't like it, you don't have to comment on it. You know, yeah. if you don't. And I think everyone now is just like up in arms always to argue, especially on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, because there's they're just hiding behind a blank profile most of the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> TikTok's the worst. I've never, okay, so this video, when this video blew up, you know how everybody's like, oh, I didn't expect this video to blow up, but I really didn't. I got so much, till this day, that video was live two years ago. Till this day, people are still commenting on it. People are still talking shit. I've never experienced that much hate in my life. I had All to, about the coffee date. Yeah. <laughs> I had to, I was with someone, I don't know who, I was with a friend. She, we were in my apartment and I was like, take my phone. For 20 minutes, I was laying flat on the ground because I was just, this is this is just too much negativity. I'm going to back you up on that. I'm old school as far as that the dating scene would go. I would always take a woman out to dinner, but I would also ask, would you like to go to dinner or would you like to meet for a drink? Because you know why you ask that question? Because some women don't want to go to dinner mm -hmm. because they don't feel comfortable being with you because they don't know you yet. Okay. That's the only thing I would ask. But if they say yes to dinner... Dinner, I'm coming to pick you up. I'm opening the door for you. I'm the old school gentleman. That's how it's going to work. I found the Steve Harvey clip. I'm going to play it. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. It. Let's hear it. Nuri Mohammed. Mm -hmm. I wish I had my phone, man. You could hear what this dude said about relationships. It's the coldest thing. He said, other than your relationship with God, who you choose to spend the rest of your life with is the single most important decision you will ever make. Because your other half will either, will either, uh, uh, your other half will be your better half or make you half of what you could be. Wow. She will either inspire you to greatness or reduce you to mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, he said, so choose wisely. Because a, a woman like an elevator button, man, 
They can take you up or down. If you get the right one, you got something. Mm -hmm. You get the wrong one, but it's like a man to a woman. If you get the right man, you can go somewhere. Right. If you get the wrong man, you all. Like I heard you say one time, well, I was laughing so hard. You said you paid for a divorce. Yeah. I said, this dude right here was committed. But see, I want people to say, she was getting a divorce already. I I didn't break the home no, up. Because you, know, because you know how people take it to work with it. Yeah. She was getting a divorce. They were had the money. Right. Right. What's wrong with that? Right. I'm trying to invest in my future. Right. See, these dudes keep That's what's wrong with this generation today. Here's the part we're talking about. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The <laughs> hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. Say it again, boy. Slide up to the table with. What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. Well, what happens to the when the woman tell you, I don't need a man, Steve? Well, they need to what? Okay, if you don't, how that's working? <laughs> <laughs> how that's working? Who don't need no man? I'm independent. I can do for myself. Yeah, but why do you want to? Yeah, okay, you can drop a transmission. You can sandblast your house. But hell, do you want to? No. I'm not trying to reduce a woman to nothing else. Be all you can be. But damn, who don't need a man? That's a lie. What man don't need a woman? I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. Try to live without them. Try to live your life without women. This ain't about lot of doubt, man. This some bullshit without them. <laughs> if it wasn't for women, what would you? Aristotle Onassis said it best. He said, if women did not exist, all the money in the world would have no meaning. Ooh. Women is everything. They the catch me out. They the lick, man. But these young boys done forgot it. Because these women out here, they trying to be, they've had to be independent because right. they ain't got the right man. Okay. But this system of marriage is still good. Okay. This system of a man taking care of a woman, that's really how it's supposed to be. All the rest of it's bullshit, man. And y'all need to quit tricking yourself with this new way of thinking. Because there's no way of thinking. This new way of thinking ain't getting y'all no damn well. I'm sorry. I got in trouble on the on one time. This group came after me because I said Marjorie belonged to me. And they told you she's not a possession. She's a person. She's a human. She is. She mine. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh. She belonged to me. But I got news for you. I'm hers. Yep. I belong to her. See, if you, if you don't like that system, carry your punk ass on. Go do something else. And let me know how that work out for you. I want to belong to somebody. Right. I want somebody to belong to me. I love that. So do I. So do I. Can I, if somebody, for women out there, if somebody asks you what you bring to the table, I just ask him, are you going to bring the table first? Mm -hmm. See what happens. I'll build it. That is, <laughs> that is a generational thing. Steve Harvey's right. It's the new generation. Not all, but it's also how you were raised. You are raised the old school way. Yeah. That's why you're the way you are. No, I, I mean... I mean, there's just so many things he says there that I, I think is so true. And and I think I think part of it is we live, honestly, I'm just a big hater on social media, right? I think social media curates these lives. We all live these crazy, lavish lives, right? On yeah, social media. Yeah, everybody's a billionaire. Everyone, yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone we're, we're the richest we've ever been right now, but we're really, we're really all just poor. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We're, everyone looks so rich on social media yeah. and so happy and so this and so that. So I look at somebody and I, I get these crazy expectations for them. And I think I have to be all of this to match that, you know? And and it just blows everything out of proportion when you until you really just break it down to what it really is, you know? And I don't know, I just, for me, it's like, I, I got caught up in that. I was in LA, I was in New York, I was living that whole life, and I just came back to Jupiter and it kind of breaks down all that. Like I, I was listening to a podcast actually that you were on just this morning when I was getting ready. And you said a lot of things that I could relate to. Like I lived that New York life, you know, that a hundred percent, you know, just a million events, every, uh, the events we were talking about events, it was something about like going to all these events and like just making other people's dream come true. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's where I am right now. I'm 32 and I'm, I don't have time to just like chase stuff. Like I know who, I, and also that comes with age, like, you know who you are and you know what you want to do. 
So now it's like time to focus on work. And sometimes people ask me, why don't I want to move back to New York? I'm going to have all these more opportunities versus in Miami because New York is obviously, you know, the center of the world, kind of. And I'm like, I just, I like my life right now. I'm, I'm not chasing. I'm not a constantly, you know, scratching for something. I'm building slowly but surely. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> I, I think uh, something that, you know, I struggle with that I see now is like, you want what you want the you want something that's, you want that flashy gold you know bar that looks amazing, but everything that glitters isn't gold, you know. <laughs> and there's there's girls who I want to date just because I I see who they are on, and I, and I get to them, and I'm like, it really isn't all that, you know. But then I'm like home, and I'm around some people. I'm like, but they would be really good for me, you know what I mean? They would they would have my back stick there through me, like you know, and all that. But I'm like, do I want to do that now? You know, it's like a constant battle that I'm living in is do I want to, am I ready for that? Am I, is there something missing? Because I always self-sabotage it when it's there in front of me. You know, I've done it multiple times. So I was open about my relationship situation. I'm very in love in my, <laughs> so grammatically incorrect. I'm very much in love with my boyfriend. I did not expect it. And I feel like relationships like that end up being the best. What is your current relationship situation? Not that you have to disclose everything, but like you said, that you're just constantly self-sabotaging and you're constantly like. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I, I date around and, you know, uh, there's a few people I've been trying to get to know more, you know, and the more I get around and the more I try, the more I'm like, I don't know if our ideals, you know, our ideals and, and values and morals will ever, you know, work together, you know. I just live a different life, especially because this is going to be my life here in Jupiter. You know, I don't see my life really going anywhere else. I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to live. If I lived anywhere else, I'd go crazy, you know? And uh, so it's just like finding someone who is into this and into this type of lifestyle. Small town. Small town. Home. Yeah, exactly. It's homey. And like, I, there's people here that are, that are that and are good for me. But then I have a hard time of like committing to that. I'm like. Why? I don't know. Because it's almost like it feels like it would be too easy and it'd be too scary to just jump down that rabbit hole, you know? It's almost like there's like no chase to it maybe or there's no, you know, like I just know they would support, have my back, but I'm also like not that very sexually into them, you know? And like that's a big part of it, you know? But maybe that's just part of the chase, you know? I, I go back to love is a choice. Like if you really like that person, you know that person's good for you, you can choose every day to wake up and honor that person and love that person and be there for that person, you know? So it's just like a constant, you know, right or wrong issue, you know? And and then I always want to try and blame it on work, you know, why I can't do it, you know, can't date, can't go out. But, you know, it's just like sometimes it's right in front of you, but it's it's just like too scary to do. Or maybe you're not just, you're just not into that person. Yeah, and yeah. it could just be that, you know? Yeah. Or it's just an excuse for not wanting to get into something new and not getting your heart broken. I'm not worried about getting my heart broken. Okay. Especially around people around here. You know what I mean? I'm worried about hurting other people, though. Fair. You know? Hmm. I'm more worried about that than I'm getting my own heart broken. What, what was your... I mean, I mean, this is your podcast. But what was your longest relationship? I dated a girl for like a year and a half. I was like 22, 23. And then I dated a girl like a couple of years ago. Yeah, about almost two years ago for like eight months. Okay. That one fucked me up. What happened? <laughs> just, just all my values and morals and all that of what really mattered and was important were kind of out the window. You were where in LA or New York? I was here. Oh, I was here, but she was a Miami girl. Okay, you know, and uh, and that shit fucked me up, you know. And there was times we broke up, and everyone saw it. Everyone saw it, and people <clears> tried to tell me, but I was like, no, 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 this is it, you know. And because love is blind, love is ignorant. Love is all those things, you know? And so when that one finally ended, it messed me up for a while. But it, I was just, yeah, not good. Okay. Mm. I have a lot to unpack here, but we can do this. Should we go to a song? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever y'all want. I mean, we can keep it rolling. Um, I had a relationship that really fucked me up in my life. And I feel like also sometimes people 
think they love is supposed to hurt so much and it's you're supposed to fight and that's why people stay in these relationships mm-hmm. because they see all these movies and you know they're like running through the airport let me get you know, it's just very dramatic what we we grew up with kind of thinking that love is supposed to be very difficult and i feel like when you're in a relationship with the right person it's not that difficult yes there's going to be ups and downs in your life because that's a part of life but it shouldn't be it you shouldn't question what is he doing? Is he cheating on you? You you shouldn't have the need to go through his phone. You shouldn't uh, be afraid to tell him to stop following Instagram models. He shouldn't, you know, if he's liking and that's what I get on my Google do all the time. He's liking and following this and he's doing that. And he, how can I approach this? I'm like, what do you mean? How do you approach this? It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> why do you know he's doing that? that yeah. Was, well, no, 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 no. I mean, why is that guy liking that? Like I'm, I'm just such a, I tell all my boys, if you date a girl, I told them even when you're not dating a girl, don't like any girl's photo. They, they like it because they want to show them, hi, I'm here. Yeah, it's like saying, hey, I'm still around. Yeah. I'm still thinking about you, but I got a girlfriend. Yeah. I think if you like another girl's photo, if you're dating them, super fucked up. That's but, not true. I mean, yes, that's it like, is. That, okay. Right. Right. Why, why are you liking a girl's photo when she's in a bikini? Like, why? Well, what's the point? All right, well, well let, let, let me pull off this. <laughs> yeah. I'm happily married. I've got hundreds of female model friends Mm -hmm. and yeah i like their photos it It has nothing to do with sexual thing at all i know but they're legit friends yeah but you're you're mature enough and i I got some idiot friends well okay okay well we're talking about (laughs) we're talking about different guys but but i won't even go there i won't even i understand i don't even like a girl's photo i'm single and i will never like a girl's photo one it's just game first of all right why are you gonna let it because like, guess what when you scroll through someone's photo and he says like by Tyler yeah Kinsley, yeah well yeah I don't want no girl that I'm talking to to see that I'm liking this girl's photo I, like, I hear you you know what I mean but now also if you have a girlfriend why there's no point because they're shopping around yeah but okay. on the flip side okay I see it I hear what you're saying now go ahead I was watching I saw this video go viral the other day about girls keeping rosters in the background of okay. relationships what do you think about that if they're not really into this relationship, mm-hmm. if they, if you're not really sure about this guy, obviously you're going to have, you know, backups, but that's, I think that's a part of humanity. Yeah. I think backups are just, <laughs> it just gets you nowhere. Did you have, did you ever have backups? Did you, Before in, in, in your life, past? Yeah. Oh, you did? I mean, not, okay. not when I was in a serious relationship, right. but if, if I was casually dating someone and I wasn't really sure where that was going, this is what I tell girls who are maybe dating somebody and they're not really sure or he's not really sure if you're and then a lot of people come at me like oh how can you say that but you shouldn't if you're not exclusive with someone you shouldn't just like exclusively date them because Mm -hmm. you're not exclusive right he's dating around so you are putting all of your energy into this guy who's not even willing to commit and i'm not saying everybody needs to commit like you can also just have fun you can date around you can do whatever you want but you guys have to be on the same page if you're dating somebody who's just wants to fuck around right now you have to know that. I think the best way to get your answer, if you're dating somebody, you can't get an answer from another guy, go date somebody else and, and kind of let it be known a little bit, you know? Oh, you're going to find out real quick. You're going to find out real quick <laughs> if he either wants to tie it down with you yep. and leave, or, or leave, you know what I mean? You may just be like, oh, that's no, that's no biggie to me. Then you know your answer. But, you know, there's been, there's been like, there was a girl who I was into and, and she's in another state and I'm busy here working like, a, you know, like a dog and I want to see her more. I'm calling her like three or four times a week, FaceTiming her, you know, all these things. But I can't go out there and see her. I'm too busy. I'm trying to get her here. The schedules don't work. But, you know, all out of nowhere, she's dating someone else. I'm like, damn, that one stings it's a little bit. Probably in the same city. You know, exactly. In the same city. They're with each other all the time now. But I'm like, damn, that one stings a little Because uh. I would love to. You know, I'm like, damn, I would actually. Now I feel it. I'm like, damn, I probably would have actually wanted to see more of her and see where that went, you know. But I think it's a great way to put it to the test is like, if you got someone who's like kind of giving that in between right now, go out and date someone and kind of let it be seen and let it be known that you're seeing somebody. Cause I think you'll get an answer pretty quickly about how much the other person cares. When you say let it be known, what do you mean by that? I don't know. Maybe post, post like an inconspicuous story about dinner or something. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> post, post her hand. <laughs> That's like a soft launch. Uh, Maybe not her hand, but, but, there you but, go. but, like, but, like, but like two glasses of wine. Oh, you know? like I'm not alone. Because exactly. <laughs> like he could be thinking, is she with somebody or is she with her girlfriends? Yeah. At least he's thinking, and then he's going to start hitting you up. 
That is true. I wouldn't go that far by posting two glasses of wine because that's like, okay, it's obvious, but maybe post a view. Mm -hmm. A view. A view that he never seen before. Mm -hmm. Or or just a dinner plate, you know? Yeah. Be aggressive. (laughs) (laughs) You want answers? Be aggressive. (laughs) No, I, 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 I I think dating now, there's so much, like you said earlier, like, are we casually dating? Are we serious? There's so much gray area and everyone's so afraid to ask, will you be my girlfriend or will you, you know, will you take it to, did you ever get asked to be your girlfriend? Did I ever get asked to be? Yeah. My, actually the way my boyfriend and I, we were just like seeing each other, seeing each other and something. And then I don't remember exactly how it happened, but he said something in a sense like, yeah, but you're my girlfriend. I'm like, no, I'm not. You never asked me to be your girlfriend. So then he had to officially ask me because Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's just how I roll. Like, As you should. How, I was going to say, yeah. How difficult it is to ask somebody, would you like to be my girlfriend officially? Mm-hmm. Well, there's just the fear of rejection. That's why no one does it. That's true. A lot of people have that problem. I got rejected twice before I had a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard the fear. Wait, fear of rejection? That's why you don't ask somebody yeah, to be your girlfriend? That's why no one asks. A lot of people have that problem, for mm-hmm. sure. I know fear of rejection in general. But. Because it's like, it's casual. It's cool. We can keep right. doing this. Yep. But if I ask you and you say no, then what happens? Then it's it. I know, but that's the fear. He doesn't want it. I don't want it to be it. So I'm afraid to ask you because I don't know if you're 100% committed on your side. I think in that case, if you should, there's so many ways you can find out where a person stands. Just like, you don't have to ask her, do you want to be with me right now? But just see like, how are you envisioning your life in the next few years? Like, do you want to have somebody, are you planning to travel the world on your own or you're planning to s- settle? I don't like the word settle, but are you planning to like be with somebody, move in with them? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to see if she's serious or not. And then based on that, you can develop further conversations. I agree. I'm just blunt. I'm like, are you seeing anybody else? Because I'm not. Hmm. Oh. I'm just blunt with it. Like, okay. that's how I talk to my wife before okay. she was my wife, you know. I are like you that. are you seeing anybody else? Because I'm not. Simple Is that, as that. then means that you're a fan. Yeah. So are we are we an item? And the answer was yes. Item? So that was an official question. Then let's go. Okay. <laughs> let's item. go with it. Yeah. An item. That's it. It's a possession. Hey, yeah, <laughs> she's mine. I, I agree with Steve Harvey. She's mine and I'm hers. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> also, what Steve Harvey said that a woman is like in this video is she's like an elevator like she can lift you up or down and I 100% believe in that and I think that ever since I started dating my boyfriend my life my career just started going up because he was also I mean he is also very driven and he's ambitious and entrepreneur and like he's pushing me and he's like, supporting you yeah. he believes in you as well 100% yep. even with the hats this was my second drop but I had a drop a year before that and I was so scared because Obviously, I was scared. It was something very new. And he's like, you can do this. I can, you know, I'll be with you and whatever. And like, he was literally helping me ship my boxes. I was doing everything myself. So then I see that things are possible. And there are people on the planet. They're going to work with you. You're not going to have to constantly think, does he like you? Because I feel like if a guy likes you, you're going to know. Mm-hmm. That's the hard part, too. It's fine. It's fine that person is yeah. going to lift you up and keep you up. You yeah. Know? I think... Uh, We've all been through that trial and error, and I think, I think there's people in relationships that are also competitive too, and like they want to be the one that's only going up, and they want to keep you down, so they can, they, so they have you in that situation, that's in that toxic. spot. That's not your person <laughs> for sure. It's toxic, you know? yeah. And so I, I think uh, you know, and that goes back to my earlier thing. It's like there's people around here I feel that could help bring me up, you know, and and, and that I've met, and but then I'm always like ah. Get away from me. You Maybe know? you're not ready for that person yet. Yeah. I feel like the right person, if you're like, if somebody is, and I don't really believe in soulmates. I, I wonder what you guys think about soulmates. I, I do, but go ahead. I think that you can create a beautiful life with multiple people on this planet, but you choose the person that you want the most, I guess. Um, wait, I, I lost my train of thought. What else did I want to say? I don't know. I forgot. But yeah, soulmates. I don't really believe in soulmates, but I feel like you need to. I don't believe that there's only one person for you that you can love. But what if there's more than one soulmate? Well, that's how they have those. That's how they have those those groups in Utah where you got like six wives. (laughs) You know what I mean? You you talk about Mormons. (laughs) That's 
polygamy. <laughs> they yeah, got hella soulmates. No, I don't mean at the same time. I mean like there's Menage a, a trois. No, there's a season. <laughs> maybe maybe your soulmate is that guy for when you were in your twenties. Then now you're thirties. Mm -hmm. Now you found your other soulmate. But yeah, we don't. I don't believe in one soulmate for in a lifetime. Yeah. I didn't say that, but yeah. I do believe in that soulmate. Usually, people when they say soulmate, they're like, "Oh, there's one person for you, and that's it." That might be for a season, though. Who knows? Yeah. But I forgot what I want. I, I was something smart. I got something yeah. for y'all. Give it to us. This is more of my TikTok and research. <laughs> TikTok and don't stop. Uh oh. So I'm talking about soulmates. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. I'm listening. There was this guy who he did a a test. They they did a test, and it was all about pheromones and hormones and the smell of men and what attracts women and whatnot. And so they did this test apparently, and. Uh, all the women were off birth control and they took this test and they smelled right and they smelled and they matched the person apparently that fit their all the natch all their whatever their health their I don't know what the hell you call this shit I'm not a doctor <laughs> you know what I mean but like the, the, basically the other half for all the immune system you know and they, they like almost matched perfectly like almost like everyone almost got the right person but then they did birth control and that messed up all the smelling of the hormones and whatnot. And it's like, the argument is like, once you get off that stuff and your hormones change, your attractions change. So it's like- That's true. It's true? It's true. I just- Wow. I went through a lot of, um, I had a sur ovarian surgery in January and my hormones were just like going all over the place. And I think that guys don't even understand. I, I, I don't know about the scents and stuff like that you were just saying, but guys don't understand how much hormones, like really, they can really fuck you up. Like when I- when your hormones are going up and down, you can just cry for no reason for an hour and you're not going to know what's going on. But you mentioned smell and I have a few questions. What is What are your biggest turn offs for women? Like if somebody like mm. if somebody, let's say, comes to a date and they, you know, they don't smell that great. Not not bad. I don't think it, I've had any stinky people yet. What, uh, what a bad perfume, or you mean body odor? Stinky Both. sex. I was about to say like not smell um, bad like body odor, but like a bad perfume or bad, just like you don't like them. You're not attracted to them. What are those things that would make you not be attracted to someone? If I was on a date and somebody had body odor, oh baby, I'm gone. You're gone. <laughs> I'm moonwalking myself out the door. What if, she, what if she was so nervous that she forgot to put deodorant? I she forget. Was so I forget all the time. To see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I never had that happen to me. To me, so wow, that's pretty tough question, honestly. Um, Tyler, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get by. Well, I don't know if a girl stank. I don't know. I, I was, I, that's hard <laughs> to get by. I'm sorry. I, I've never had that. I, I usually, but usually, when a girl has a great smell, oh, that shit's that's that shit's on a hook right there. You know what I mean? Like I crave a good smell. Me too. And because then, because it's rememberable. It's yeah. Like, when you wear that again, it's like, oh wow. You, you know? know why? A sm scents, fragrances, whatever. How would I don't know what's the proper word? Because it's the only. So we have five senses. You can't like close your nose. You're constantly. You know, you can close your eyes. You can you play music, but you cannot stop smelling so mm -hmm. that's why it's like so more memorable so much more memorable you know how you go to a store every store has a significant uh, specific scent right hotels they do that on purpose so you always remember them when you walk by well well someone told me too that's like the last scent that goes is smell apparently maybe that's wrong i don't know yeah. someone told me that because i uh here's like a, a true story my mom's room you know we just did a reveal at her house sprayed to her scent and, you know, because I have her perfume the way she had it. My mom always wore flower bomb. And I've only sprayed it like a few, like two times. Sprayed it. Oh, wow. Like it just brought so much. Mm -hmm. Like you can listen to her. You can hear her. You can watch her talk on videos, all these things. But when you smell something, you really relive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a smell gives a presence. That's that big. Listening, hearing, feeling. <clears throat> well, you can't, when you, well, you can't feel someone anymore, but, you know, that no other sense can't, you know. And that was, uh, that's powerful. You know, I think scent is, in, scent is important. So do I. I want to reverse the question now. Go ahead. You go out to date and the guy smells. And we're talking about bad, uh, body odor though. You got I me would, over your self -conscious. I mean, listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm really big on smelling good. I'm a like, nervous. I don't know like, about let's my go. Odor or not. <laughs> um, I just apply perfume before we start rolling. So I'm not <laughs> in, in, insecure right now. But 
I was just, I mean, it would be a turn off for sure. Yeah, that means that's just be not, it was just not, it's not fun. But what, what else? So I live with two girls in college. Oh, right. And <laughs> that uh, must be fun. It was a lot of fun because <laughs> I would come home, it'd be like eight girls and two. You mentioned Menage Trois before. It, I would come home from school, like I was a new kid at this college, right? I was like my junior, senior year. I come home from college. And it'd be like eight girls in t-shirts and underwear. I'm just like, man, how did I get this lucky? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, but but one of them, I mean, I got really close with, you know, the two girls I live with. And Cass, she was like, uh, she said, always look at a girl's nails. And that'll show you how mm-hmm. well she takes care of herself. A hundred percent. Yep. And so now I'm always looking. Let's I was looking, go. I go, nail, <laughs> ring, nail, ring. Yep. <laughs> and see what I can find. Yeah, I, I also tell girls, like, you don't, they also ask me a lot about grooming and, you know, because I always promote this, like you have to look, represent, like you don't have to be all dull. You don't have to have your hair, makeup, everything done. Also, if you don't have money to get your nails done, just have them clean. Exactly. You don't have to have a manicure, like professionally done. Just cut them, file them, put some cuticle oil, take care of yourself because that's how you show that you love yourself. I'm going to show you something. I'm all about that life. Uh oh, you're not gonna bust him out, are you? I'm gonna show you something. He's about to bust out something bad. You better watch <laughs> out. <laughs> you gonna show up your toes? <laughs> oh my god. Tell me what you think about these toes. Oh Let's go. Look at that blue. Oh, is it purple? It's a periwinkle blue, I That's would a, say. Oh yeah, I got, I got, I got. Is that what we call it periwinkle blue? I think so. Um, yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got paint on my toes right now, y'all. Who did that? Um, me and Katie went for a little R and R. Oh, and I, uh, I, need that. I got to pick out her color, and then she's like, if you, "If you pick out my color, I get to pick out your color." So I gave her like an awful color. <laughs> I mean, this is a beautiful color. Yeah. That is a pretty color. Why didn't you match your my nails? Yeah. We only had time to get a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, my my toenails are painted, y'all. <laughs> what do you feel about men uh, getting mani pedis? Hundred percent support. Okay, I love it. Love it. So uh, love I it. don't understand why guys think it's like. I love it. It feels good. You know what? I, if let's say a guy is going to get their hair cut, you're getting your barber, and you th- leave your nails looking so gross. Yeah. How? Yeah. No. But then you spend money on your like. My boyfriend gets his haircuts once or twice. No, often, very right. often. Uh huh. And recently, I we started getting onto like mani pedis for him because he was just like, I just never. It was just so weird. But now. He loves it. I find it important for a man because we shake a lot of hands or yeah. we're always, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I won't do that again, but <laughs> I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. But yeah, when, when, you, when you shake someone's hand and even, even a man, if that, if that guy's hands are dirty, I'm like, all right, all right you're, you're a hard worker, but you didn't have time to clean up. Come on. <laughs> you know what else? If you're in a meeting and I obviously work on social media, people can always see my hands and I can always see my hands, but let's say you work in an office. And you're in a meeting. Like, right. We're very close right now. Yeah. We can see each other's very Oh, for closely. sure. So if you have nails that are all... Banged up and... It's not a good look. I just came from the gym too, so... They look really nice. <laughs> I, I chew mine off because I'm just anxiety driven. I did that when I was younger. And then I told my mom, um, I'm going to stop biting my nails if you bake me a cake. And she did it and I stopped. Very I'm gonna dip his nails in something nasty that his mouth won't like, and then he's not gonna do it anymore. I got, I got put those you. like lip, uh, um, those nail polishes that taste really bad. Really? Yeah. But I, I'll just pick them. It doesn't matter if I pick them, chew them. Mm. Then you need to start using like a hand cream, and that's gonna be too slippery for you. To really? Do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what about what about what about things that guys do that you know we're talking about aches or things that are name you know, dropping. Name dropping. When I, as a, I do hate that. I, hate yeah. <laughs> I met my boyfriend pretty fast when I moved to Miami, but obviously I had guy friends. And when, when somebody is, if you have to say that you know certain people and you know, like you're just showing you're so insecure. Right. My, in my single days, when people were like, oh, I'll take you to Carbone. I was like, I mean, for those who don't know, Carbone is like a really fancy restaurant in, in New York and Miami. And, and it's very good, to and be it's honest. It tastes good. It's expensive. <laughs> That's why guys were, and it's very hard to get a reservation. Yeah. But it's like cool if you can, like you're right. trying to be a, right. a flex. So like, oh, I'm taking you to Carbone. Yeah. Yeah, I got But you. the real flex is taking you to Emilio Bellato's in New York City and Soho. That's the real flex. 
Yeah. All right. Well, text me that so I can I take will. my wife there because I've never taken her there. Yeah. <laughs> Name dropping is it's it's just I it's no I agree. It's a huge. I hate I, I I you know I'm dating girls and they're like oh yeah well one time I was out with. And I'm like, they're like saying such and such his name. Or yeah. One girl even said to me one time, <laughs> she said, she said the weekend hit me up too, but I chose you. I was like, you dumb as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you picked the wrong one. You know, you what? want my little ass boat? You could be on his yacht. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens to me too when I move? I mean, now I've been in Miami for two years, so I have a friend group that I like. In the beginning, even girls were name dropping, but like showing off how they know like important people and mm -hmm. my favorite thing was when this one girl mispronounced somebody's name that i know <laughs> she just she didn't she, she didn't know how what their name was and i corrected her she's like ha, ha, ha. <laughs> was, we're not friends anymore yeah no i, I feel like uh miami's a ton of that yeah. yeah ton of that ton of that and no matter how successful you are or how confident you are people are gonna try and this is what we discussed a little bit in the middle it's like people are going to try to bring you down because they are not happy with where they are so they're going to tell you oh i have this i have that I'm, I'm just i just bought a i don't know anything material it's like okay i hope you enjoy it mm -hmm. no doubt no doubt i used to take pride in what you know when i first moved back to jupiter <laughs> uh i didn't have wheels i came from new york you know i told my i had an old truck and i totaled it and so i didn't have wheels so i bought my brother's old truck and this thing was on its last leg, and it was like 270, it was at 250,000 miles on it. My whole goal was to get to 300,000 miles. I mean, it was dense all on the side, <laughs> and nothing I'd love more to do was like pull up to a girl's like <laughs> high rise in Miami or to take her on a date. Take her on a date. And I love like, that. They're like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? You know what I mean? I, you, know what? <laughs> you know what I'll say in the beginning when you guys ask me if a guy pulled up with a shitty car, would I be turned off? What if a girl shows up to a date looking like shit? Would you be turned off? It's not the same thing. <laughs> How? Because that's appearance. And to me, your appearance means more to me than your, your car you're driving. But what if your, he your did Your car's it? your situation. Yeah, but, that's a situation. I agree. Your car's your okay. situation. Your appearance, your, the way you pull up is, is, is your look. That's your effort. Because your first, your, your, the way you uh, present yourself is very important. If you can't afford a better looking car, that's a situation. But what if somebody's doing that to test her? Well, don't test me on a bad wardrobe outfit or 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 covered in smelly, because then you you just really messed up. <laughs> you messed up everything. That's a sabotage. I'm just sorry. You're done. What? Do you but, but a jalopy car? I'm gonna come out there and but, open but, that door for but you. But you can have you can have a beat up car, but yeah. clean that thing out. Yep. Yeah. Put a little. Put a little. Dice and some candles, you know, candle, <laughs> a little candle, air freshener, <laughs> air freshener hanging from the top. Like, put the things in the AC, like, get the vacuum. And, He's you know? still opening the door for you. Oh, that's nice. And have like waters on the side and have candy. Are you getting in the car? It's a jalopy car. I don't know what a jalopy means. Okay, it's um, it's a beat up car. All right, car. I used to drive this Honda Civic, right? Mm -hmm. When you got in, it always went doo, 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 because I couldn't fasten the passenger seatbelt. Mm -hmm. I should take girls out on dates with that. And they just got in. I'm like, man, whoever raised these women were good girl, were good yeah. parenting. I mean, I lived in New York, so cars were not a thing. So, so yeah, you like, just like. I don't really care about cars and I don't have a car right now. So it's not that I'm a car snob, but it's just like in the very beginning, guys date women for physical appearance and girls date guys for lifestyle. And that's a fact. That's, that's pretty damn good. Oof. Do you that, disagree? No, no, it's the harsh truth. You. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> it is the harsh truth. Yeah. I think I, I, I self sabotage the uh, the good living part. <laughs> my, my the house I was living in, which is re recently renovated, it looks beautiful, and uh, amazing now. Was a dump, ass fill. It, it was, but it doesn't look like that anymore, baby. And everyone was like, <laughs> "How did you ever bring anyone back here?" I was like. I don't know. They, they, I, I knew if they liked me or not because they, if they were stuck around here, yep, you exactly. Know. <laughs> there was no complaining. There was holes in the ceiling, mold in the mold in the walls. How does that happen though? It, like, how does it get to that level? It's been a family ho home for thirty years, mm -hmm. so it's just a lot of neglect. No, no a lot of guys home. came in there and partied away in the house and messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> it, became, it, it became a frat house. Quick. Yeah, yeah, it's a main cave. Yes, yeah. there it, it is. Really well kept. But now it's really, really nice. But now I'm like, this is too nice for me. I'm not living here. I'm gonna rent it out. 
and, I, and I'm, 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 where are you gonna live? I'm buying a house. I'm closing on Thursday. Okay. And it's gonna, it's ugly. It looks like a funeral home. But that's gonna be so much fun to like crash. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna renovate it, and and, and you should have told me because Amber and I would have lived in that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the nice one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what, how many kids you said you have? I have five kids. Four girls and a little baby boy. Oh my god, it's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Awesome. Four girls. Okay. Four girls. Do you want kids? Yes, I want so many kids. How many? Ten. Well, <laughs> no. I want I want enough, not enough, again, grammar. I want as many kids as I can financially, you know, send to a guy in a good school, make sure they have everything they need. Like my parents always gave me everything I wanted, but that was in Croatia. Now I live in the U.S. where college, like my college was free because I had good grades. Here it's not free as far as I know. So... I want to provide them a life that I kind of came here to build. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, no, I, I want like five kids. I want my own basketball team. Yeah, that would be fun. But it's, I hear from my friends who just had babies, it's kind of difficult to carry it's a difficult. child for nine months. And where are the people when they're talking about equality? You want to carry a child for four and a half months and then we can like, you know, do that. That's what usually guys, when they talk about equality, it's easy to be like, oh, we'll split the bill, but we're not going to split anything else that you have to well, I mean, as a woman, <laughs> what, what Steve Harvey said, he, go, he, go, he goes, like, what do y'all bring to the table? He goes, she can make another you. That's, yeah. that, that's that was enough. the best line ever. Yeah. That line was stick to me forever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, he, he's truly incredible. So he got backlash on that. He got backlash for the, like the whole possession thing. He gets backlash on a lot of stuff, but you, mm -hmm. but you know why? Like you said, he gets backlash because he's real. Yeah. That's why. And a lot of people today can't handle realness. And when people react negatively to something online, it's because they're triggered. So you have to yep. see like, why are you triggered? Exactly. Explore that. You can maybe 100% disagree with that person, but why are you angry at that person? Like, why are you mad? Like with, with my coffee walk date video, you can disagree, but why are you so angry at me saying that that's... Yeah, that's your opinion. That's it. And I'll tell you why. Because that's why? probably the only date they got in a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because maybe they met their significant other through a coffee date and they felt personally attacked that I said like that's uh, acceptable. Could be. Then maybe they, that's the only dates they're getting, but that's the only dates that you are accepting. Like that... Your mindset is key. Like, I feel like when you are okay settling for a coffee date, that's what you're going to get. I never, I don't remember, again, I'm not, I've been single, I haven't been single for a while, but I don't think I was ever even invited to a coffee date. And I'm never invited by a coffee date, so that's yeah. just. I want to do something that you were talking about you do every Tuesday. Yeah. What would Coco do? Mm -hmm. You want to do some of those? Yeah. Let me grab my phone. You want to choose the questions? No. Or you want to choose the questions? Let's do it. Okay. We'll play. Come on. So what will Coco do started, I think, two years ago, and I am doing it every Tuesday and Friday. I never missed it. <clears throat> okay. My husband feels like a roommate. When I try to express what I feel, nothing changes. It's been three years. Mm. It's been three years? I think what she's it's a roommate because they ain't got no spark. Oh yeah, yeah. The the candle went out. They yeah. they got to relight that. What do you do when the candle goes out? How do you get that back? You work on it. Yeah. If you don't work, and I feel like when something goes wrong in the relationship, maybe one side is you know more to blame, but it's both sides. So if you see that something, let's say sex life is not really great right now, why don't you try? Maybe your husband is not initiating sex, but why don't you try? You know, put on something cute. Why don't you? send him a sexy picture of yourself in lingerie when he's at work. Like do something to spark his imagination because guys are very visual. Absolutely. We are. And they like, they're just simple. TMI. My wife just did that a few days ago. So, you know, <laughs> it's it like, worked. Hey, we're, we're visual. Yes, also, we are. But also get a little handsy. Yeah. Bump on us. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah, give, give us a little touch. It don't take much. Yeah, I, I touch the couch the wrong way. I get excited. Say it again. You know? so, so, Say it again. So it don't take much. You don't know? forget about us. <laughs> you know, I, I I was out with I was out with somebody. You want to choose a question? And Let me we, see. We've been we've been going out quite a bit. You, you know, and she she kind of gave me a little touch, and I was like, it's time to go. Where was it, the touch? It was down below. <laughs> Below it was belt. below the belt. <laughs> and after that touch happened, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to get out of here. Yeah. I mean, it's very easy to get a guy interested if you touch him 
properly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to grab him, mm -mm. but it's like subtle. Neck, ears, it's Ooh, all very sensitive. Neck, ear, yeah. Tell him it's great. Yeah, don't be afraid to manipulate them a little bit with like physical touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pictures are great, but not okay if you're not dating somebody. Like exclusively, do not send them naked pictures. Oh, they're no doubt. Up everywhere. Yeah, and don't. I don't even believe in sending naked pictures until you're all like really, really serious. Because you, it takes a lot of trust. Yeah. And you, I mean, you see so many nightmares situations where they're not together anymore, and then all of a sudden that photo gets passed around or whatever. Yeah. Like you don't want that. Let's see. He's the there's. Question. They're still talking about the coffee on here, huh? Always, <laughs> man. I'm getting the. Si I'm telling you, I've been doing this for two years. I'm getting the same questions. He doesn't want to commit. He wants to take me on a coffee. Um, we've been together for years. He doesn't want to get married. It's mostly like guys being low effort. Okay, he says his ex contacted him. Doesn't know what to do. We went out four times. Should I cut it off? If you like the person, why would you cut it off? The, you can, you can the guy's it. ex contacted him and he told her this information. So Okay, well, why don't we answer it on my Instagram story? I'll just do it. Are you ready? Hold on, it says his ex contacted Tell him. me when you're ready Doesn't so I can know start what recording. We, should do. we went out four times. What to do? Should I cut it off? Oh. Well, well, the question is, Wait. I want to know how did he contact? I mean, how did she, how did she contact? Like, like as a, hey, I miss you contact or? I, this is a new chick. The ex is reaching out to the new chick. Says no, no, no. Ex. ex the ex-girlfriend. So we're dating. <laughs> Me and Coco are dating. My ex reaches out. We've been dating four times. My four ex, days. My ex <laughs> reaches out. I tell her. Yeah. But the, the important part here that he said that he doesn't know what to do. Cut his ass okay. off. I have... Wait. This was not good. Okay, I'll just do it like this. What do you think? I got the answer. Cut his ass off. <laughs> what do you think? I agree. Let it go. <laughs> He's thinking about her too much. Like, come on now. Yep. He, if he liked you, he wouldn't even think about her. He wouldn't even bring her up. He would just let her hit him up and let it die. He, would not, he wouldn't even bring it up. He wouldn't even go there. Cut his ass off. Fast. Let him go. Let him go. Right? <laughs> okay. I'll post these later because I need to do my little cap. We're going to answer a few more questions. It's going to be so much Oh, fun. I like that. Saved. Okay. And now I'm going to choose a question. He doesn't know what to do. Mm. Okay. Peach Queen's in here saying she'll send me something sexy. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. She's hilarious. She is awesome. Okay. I have this a lot. Um, two dates. He canceled the third date. But still calling hasn't rescheduled though. Should I move on? So usually that's that got a lot of questions. He's still calling. A lot of yeah. Okay. So you went on one or two good dates. Right. And then he canceled and then he doesn't reschedule. Did he give a give did he give a reason why he canceled or just or just canceled? He didn't. He's doing the old bait. He's doing he, you know, he's got the little fishing line out. He's got you hooked. And then you stop, you know, stop swimming for a little bit. He's going to start jigging again. Make sure you're still hooked. Right? <laughs> is that, is you know that what, what you need to do? You need to go bite some more bait and go figure out someone else. And then and then just tell him, you know, if you want to take me seriously, take me on another day. Wait, okay. Right. Can you repeat that? Go ahead, T. <laughs> All right. He's fishing right now. So what he's doing is he's got the line in the water. You're on you're hook right now. Right? <laughs> he got your damn hook. And so what you need to do is you need to, you need to lay down the law. You need to tell him... Look, I ain't talking to you until I go on another date, or I'm gonna go bite someone else's. Hook. I'm gonna take someone else's bait, right? Spit that hook. You got it, girl. <laughs> you think? I'm gonna have to back that up and agree with T on that one. So you know what? You should go <laughs> fishing on some else's boat and then see if he's interested in you. Then. <laughs> so many fishermen. <laughs> there you go. I'm not a fisherman. I just went. I just did a fishing line because he went there. <laughs> no, I, <don't. laughs> I usually. Went, uh, yeah, that was. Okay. I've never even been fishing before. So, so Coco, somebody just asked you, <laughs> when is it appropriate for a woman to go initiate with a guy or go intimate? Maybe it's meant to say intimate. Oh, like sex? Yeah. Okay, I have a, an opinion that you can have sex whenever you want, first date if you want. I agree with you. If you're a grown adult. You felt a connection, you're horny, you feel safe, you feel comfortable, you can have sex with them. If they don't call you afterwards, it's because they're not interested in you. 
That's a fact. Like there, there's no, maybe some guy is going to be like, oh, well, she slept with me. She sleeps with everybody. But yeah, but you don't like her because if you really like her. You wouldn't worry. You would be happy that she slept with you. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's Am a good I take. wrong? No, you're right. Listen, I like this vibe. Your vibe is Thank on point, you. Coco. Thank you. I haven't really heard anyone really say it that way. It's because really they're just politically like, correct. Makes sense, though. Yeah, it? it does. Yeah. It does. Makes a lot of sense. Because a lot of people, I know a lot of guys who actually think that way. Like you said, oh, well, she slept with me. She she would have slept with whoever. Blah, 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 blah. But let, guess what? Yeah, but I it, think that's an insecure thing. For it the, is an insecure male. male. Look, it's like, she, she hooked up with me the first night. She probably hooked up. It don't matter who you hooked up with or when you hooked up with. Like, I, I when we talk about this all the time, like, when girls ask me about my past, like, like I've had this two my two serious relationships, they asked me about my past, and they both cried after they got the answer. You know? And Why? I, because they didn't like what I said. I, I was like, you, well, if you want to know, you're going to know. They you don't want to know. I mean? They really don't want to know. Don't know you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, I'm like, 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 because my whole thing is like, I'll never ask you. I think it's a really, it's just, it's just a dumb question yeah. to ask. I don't yep. want to know. Ooh, yeah. What do you mean ask? What question? Uh, like how many people you slept with, who you slept with. Okay, I posted a video about body count and why does that matter? And I said, the only reason, the only reason when a guy is worried about your body count is when he is probably going to realize that they're, you slept with guys who are better in bed than he is. A lot of, bed, a lot of people got mad. Oh, wow. I see that. Why wow. do you care about somebody's body count? I've never asked that question. Never. How, 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 who Never. Because first of all, I'm not asking you because I really don't want you to ask me either. <laughs> it feels like I'm going to try to avoid that whole you know, conversation. We're going to avoid this conversation real quick. <laughs> we, I ain't going to ask because I don't even want you to know mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell no. The thing with body counts is if you ask, so let's say you ask me my body count and I say three, you're going to say you're lying. If I say 33, you're going to say, oh, you're a hoe. No, I'm going to still multiply by four. <laughs> T, yes, <laughs> that. So wait, that's the rule. That no, it's a it's a J Cole song. Uh, he, said, he says that she slept with about four. She said he said that she slept with three or four. So you might as well multiply by four. You know, so he's talking about like everyone lies about that number. Yes, there's just yes. no point to say it. It's yeah. no point to talk I about that. I even lied about my numbers back then, and they still cried. You know. Yeah, I don't even talk about numbers. Yeah, I don't know why people even ask that. Dumbest question in the world. This ain't math class. Because, <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a saying, it's a song, it's a quote, it just says, please don't judge me, because if you judge me, you can get ugly before it gets beautiful. So mm. why even go there? Oh, mm. I like that. I like that too, for sure. Why even go there? Do we got any more Cocos? Oh yeah, there's so many. I saved, I saved those two that we answered. I got the boys and men song stuck in my head right now, after the Steve Harvey belonging to each other, right? I belong to you. Okay. Right? It's in my head because of that reason. Yes. And I'll hold, hold you tight, tight, baby. All through the night, I'll make love to you. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> that was beautiful. We're going in. Okay. What's up, Coco? I'll read the question, then you guys can answer. All right. Uh, why do I like the player type, the chase, the adventure? Not into the nice guy. I want, tr I want thrill. Come on now. Give it to me. Go ahead. Ready? Get it. Everyone likes a bad boy. Nobody wants a boring guy. Simple as that. What about you? I mean, that's why I got picked second. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Everybody wants a bad boy. Player type, the chase, the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, my answer would probably be just because you are... That one, that one also, be. you can have fun and you want to like just, you know, have the ups and downs, but you don't want to commit. And you, it's easier to choose a guy that you know that he's not going to commit. You also want somebody with experience. Well, that's, it kind of goes back to my own argument against myself earlier. Is like, I know there's good around here. Like, you know, right. talking about the girl who I went to high school with and all that, who I know has like been good for me forever. But to me, I'm like, that shit puts me to sleep. Oh, and it's boring. Oh, then then that's not your person. Okay, I guys, I have a great question. About Go ahead. The, the chase and the excitement and, the, and this and that. And you got keep. You got to find somebody but, to but keep you on your think, toes. I also think I'm growing out of that though, because I don't care about like that stuff turns me off more than it turns me on anymore. Now. I think you've outgrown it a while ago. To be honest, she could be. Okay. Go ahead. Boyfriend says he had a porn addiction from working on the road for years. Now in therapy, should I stay with him? Mm. 
Yes, because he's working on it. Anyone that's working on something could be better and they're working to something. And he's trying to be better for you. So I think there's there's two good things I can take out of it. One, he's working to something. And two, he's horny. He likes <laughs> sex and he's going to want to have a lot of sex with yep. you. He can't get it on porn, so he's going to want to get it from you. So if you like sex, you might like this guy a lot. <laughs> I don't really agree, but let's continue. <laughs> yeah. Just as long as he doesn't think you're a porn star, give him a shot, work through it with him, and find your find your connection. <laughs> you watch porn, Coco? Yes. So then what's wrong with him watching porn? He's a porn addiction. That's a difference, yeah. Porn addiction. What does a porn addiction look like? How, how many times a day are you watching porn? Yeah. It's not even about that. It's more about not being turned on by what you have in front of you. Really? Ah, okay. Because That's they, a different story. That's yeah. a different story. So is is that person not turning him on? I guess not. That's the real question. So so I, I'm not a big porn person. I'm a visualizer. Me too. I like real stuff. I'd be thinking I of, want it in front of me. I'd be thinking of, <laughs> yeah. I'd be thinking of things just going cross eyed and Oh my god. I mean I don't watch porn on like a regular basis. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. Okay, this is interesting. My boyfriend makes vulgar and sexual comments about other women, including my friends. It's oh, no. 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 Okay. Your see. boyfriend? No. Wait. No, no, no. No, ma'am. Walk away. Hell to the no, no. He's got <laughs> no, no respect for you. None whatsoever. <laughs> right? Like, he, he can't be doing that. He, vulgar. He's not even a gentleman. No, no, not a gentleman. First of all. He shouldn't be making those comments. <laughs> you got to be a gentleman. And not even about your friends. Come on now. Yeah, that's gross. Walk away. Gross. I said gross. Oh, gross. Yeah, yeah like, walk away. New term. Get rid of that dude. I, I'll come up with some words. Uh, creation words. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do one more. And then we can leave Coco's for next week. Um, I'm a virgin and he doesn't want to take that from me. Red or green, green flag. Oh. I got it. Okay, tell That's me. a yellow flag. <laughs> Here's why. It's a yellow flag. <laughs> Because that's a major responsibility. And I think it's almost, it's, it's a big thing to do, big mm. thing to take here and, and make that step with somebody who's never done it. I think he's worried about if he's fully committed to you or not. I think once, if he were to be fully committed to you, he would be into it. But I don't think he's there yet. So he doesn't want to assume the responsibility of doing that and then leaving you and then hurting you. Anything Bottom to- line, he's protecting you from him. So... That's not a red flag. Yeah, because he's, yeah, he's not ready for that. Yeah, I agree with T said. But congrats. <laughs> okay, go, okay, go. Congrats on being a virgin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's nice. Man. <clears throat> Excellent answers, guys. I'm very. Um, that's a good dude. Should we take one live caller, Coco, and call yeah. it a day? Yeah. Let's do it. They're going to be rude. I will hang up. They're not rude. <laughs> I went on other live shows and people are not that nice. Really? Yeah. No, we got a nice little family here. These two are, these are our firecrackers right here. They always bring in. We got Kylie on. We got, we got Christine on. And we got Anna on. Anna, last week you called and we didn't get to get to your answer first. So Anna, you go first. Have you seen going from hookups to dates? From hookups to dates, like, can you just casually sleep with somebody and then start dating them? Is that the question? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, like the first time that I like that question. question. Of course you do, Christine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's me. Can you go on a dinner date? Are you going to go on a date to see you on like coffee dates? Try some kind of hangout on a date yeah, if you make it clear to him that that's what you want, but if you start as a hookup, if you're like doing a 2 a.m. what you're doing and you up and stuff like that, it's I don't think it's going to go to anything more than that. That's but, tough going from a booty call to a date. Yeah. That's tough. I think it kind of goes back to uh, kind of what we were saying earlier, like put set a boundary. Like if we yeah. want to, you want to keep doing this, we got to go out. We want to like, spend time, do dinner, do more dating things. And if he wants to, he will. And, and if, if he doesn't, booty, you know it's just a hookup. And then you have a choice. Just keep having casual sex or, you know, start over with someone else. Or just raise your standards. I think you should raise your standards. Yes. Of course. Thanks for calling in and always hanging. Christine Kylie, what? We're, we're meeting up in San Diego this weekend. 
Wow, let's go. The squad's meeting up. Who's, who's meeting up? Christine, yeah, we'll Anna. Make sure I have all the stories for you guys. Good. You got to call in next week and share, share the story. That's awesome. Middle community here. Oh, that's nice. Um, it will be crazy. All right, so what questions do you got for us, Christine? Okay, let's see. I weirdly have been getting a lot of people from my past. Um, I know that you guys kind of know about that story about that one guy. Okay, I have another one who just kind of came up in from my past. And I don't know if this is, like, a sign. I should be looking back to, like, some of the guys maybe I've kind of, like, overlooked a little bit. But, like... What is your, Gigi, what's your, like, your opinion on, like, going back to people from your past? Do you think it's just, like, a no-go or, like, Who wants give to give it an know? opportunity if mm. there's still possibly something there? I personally I think... really, like, explored. I personally think that if you guys had something, you would have it back then. I feel like you're probably doing well right now and you're living life and you're happy and he can see that you're happy and he's like, oh, I want a piece of that. But mm. back then, it's like, why didn't you make it work? Why didn't you put in the effort? Mm -hmm. That's what I think. He wanted a piece of that. that. Okay. Well, the first I was thinking, too, because, like, there was a lot of times back when, you know, when I was a lot younger and, like, wasn't really, like, open to fully being in a, to a relationship at the time. Um, or it just, like, wasn't the right scenario. Um, so I guess that's... But, I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense if it would have been meant to be able to but also timing is timing is everything too. I was so, gonna say that, yeah. You know, if you weren't interested, then maybe he wasn't on your level, and now he is. I mean, it doesn't hurt to try, but I don't think that you should hold on to history or memories. Like, look at him as a new person. Don't don't give him second chances or fifth chances just because you know him for so long. Okay, I like that. Good, good advice. Okay, well, Let's I'll go. Let you know Thank you. Well done. Well Good done, luck. Coco. Good luck, Kylie. We'll or call Christine. you Dr. Coco. Kylie, what you got for us? Anytime. So, I'm still reading the same book, okay? And it talks about sex. First of all, Coco, you're gorgeous. Oh, thank you. The Instagram, um, you're so gorgeous. Good for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know, Coco, if you agree with what's going on in this book. I'm going to read you a little bit, and then I want your you know, your perspective on it, okay? Okay. All right, let me get it. Let's get it. The intention of sex is great, but the method is hopeless. Pleasure is involved, so it drives two people toward each other, but oneness comes only momentarily. So you try to meet in other areas of emotion and intellect. People are always trying to find common ground. We like the same ice cream, both play video games, share the same Zodiac sign, and like the same TV shows. But unless you understand that you can never become one, you will not learn to enjoy the opposite. These two energies, I'm a big energy person, so here we go, big keyword. These two energies, which in the human race we call masculine and feminine, are always trying to come together. At the same time, except for this longing to be together, they are opposites. They are lovers and enemies at the same time. If they look for similarities, there seems to be little common ground. But the attraction of the opposites is always there. So that's, that's deep. A little bit. Um, what do you think about that? I don't really. Okay, can there's you, a lot to unpack. Yeah, there. yeah. So, so are, are you saying that sex? Pleasure brings us together, but doesn't wholly put us together. I guess is kind of what I'm grasping, and we try to long for ways other way, other ways to come together. And the only thing I'm going to unpack from that is I agree that like sex is like is like is a thing of pleasure that like attracts us and brings us together. But I will say, after sex with someone I care about, a lot of deep conversations have been had, and so I don't know where or what that's going with True. that. But you know, yeah, one. You know, it may be better for one person in sex. I think it says something about coming. One of us yeah. comes. I don't, I don't. I think in the beginning she said something. Can you tell in the beginning you said something about like just one person coming? Is that what I got? That's what I thought I heard too. Yeah. So ba basically she, he is not her. Listen to this part. So this is just a little bit. He goes, sex is natural. It is there in the body. Sexuality is something you invented. It is psych uh, psycho psychological. If sex in the body 
if it's sex in the body, it is fine. It is beautiful. The moment it enters your mind, it becomes a perversion. It has no business with your mind. Sex is a small aspect of you, but today it has become huge. For many, it has become life itself. So what do you think about that? That's a little bit... I'm a pervert. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that sex is a small part of life. I I think think if you are not sexually satisfied with the person you're with right now, get ready. It's only going to get worse. And if you're going to be with somebody and you're not going to get laid till the rest of your life, I don't want that for you. Mm -hmm. No. I I totally agree. I think this is like um, kind of extreme. Very. You know what I mean? But I also think like it does come into perspective when you guys are always trying to, you know, relate to one another in some way. Like you should enjoy the opposite. You should you should enjoy you know, the pleasure of having somebody who's opposite of you instead of trying to have something to relate to all the time. When you say... Though, I'm a firm believer in doing things together. Like, I'm a big, like, I'm an outdoorsy person. I love hiking. I'm a big surfer. So, like, I love all those things and I would love to enjoy that with somebody else. But I guess enjoying the opposites is something that this guy is trying to... I don't think that you can build a life with someone if you don't have the same interests. Yeah, opposites attract, but you're not going to stay with that person. Like if you love Taylor Swift and your boyfriend hates her, can't stand her, you're never going to go to a concert with him. And if you're building a life with him, you want to go you know, to a fun concert with him, to a singer that you really like. If he hates uh, pizza and you love pizza, like what, what you're not going to eat pizza with him anymore? I'm the type of person... I want to be like my boyfriend and I are very similar and obviously we have differences too, but I want a guy who's a foodie who likes food. I could never be with somebody who is a vegan or they eat. I mean, you're, <laughs> you, you know a lot about nutrition, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I I'm not a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> But like, I wouldn't be with somebody who's counting their calories, who doesn't want to, you know, it, that's not fun for me. I don't want to have a life where I'm going to have to like live my life on my own and then meet up with him in the, you know. No, we don't count calories. We eat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that was yeah, an example. Awesome. Well, we got to wrap this up. Kylie, Anna, Christine, thank you all for calling in. Um, everybody. Thank awesome you, ladies. Episode. Thank Coco, you guys. thank you for coming all the way from Miami. It's always so much more fun when we have somebody. I know, live. live. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, nice to meet it really you. was a pleasure to meet you. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you're, if y'all are in New York City, go check out the billboard. It's up in Times Square area. Uh, get a picture in it. I'll repost y'all. Love you guys. And that's a wrap for episode 40-something <laughs> with Coco. <laughs> See y'all.